Hey everybody, it's W. Mark Watts. I'm going to say a big thank you for coming and hanging out with us again for another episode of the podcast. And you know how I like to do it, like to be respectful of both of our time. So let's get right to it. Today's episode is about one word or two words, depending on how you look at it. It is self-pity. And I want to caution everybody out there who's listening, who actually hears this episode today about self-pity. I remember very clearly back uh, prior to my divorce that how I was really feeling uh, at the point where I really decided or really understood that this was the direction that my marriage was going, that it was not going to be repaired, that the right thing for me to do was to uh, make the decision to get a divorce. And, you know, and I didn't come across that decision easily. But after I did, of course, I had a whole slew of emotions. And I, that was sometime in the in the um, springtime, if I remember correctly, springtime, early summertime of 2004, when I made that, uh, you know, discovery or when I made that decision in my mind. And after that, uh, because I didn't, finally really admit that to my my former wife wife at the time it wasn't until I think Thanksgiving of 2004 that we really knew that it was going to be over and along that whole time I started to have all kinds of different thoughts Uh, I started to really feel down and, and feel bad for myself and feel sorry for myself and you know that pattern it lingered on for a while. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have any of those thoughts. What I'm saying is I got to a place where I just started to really feel sorry for myself for no good reason. Um, I I knew it was going to be, it wasn't going to be the easiest of journeys, or at least I anticipated it wouldn't. I knew there would be challenges, but I just felt really sorry for myself. And I continued to have that mindset for way too long. Uh, And I just want to caution you that it's possible it can happen to anyone. And so in order to get myself out of that, I did a couple things in particular, but I also studied and and really listened to some of the things that other people have done and, and they suggest. So today I just want to talk about two or three things real quickly that if you're feeling, if you ever find yourself in that space, again, it's quite okay. It's quite normal to go to that place. The challenge and the issue is when you allow yourself to stay in that space. So how do you start to get yourself out of that self-pity talk, that self-pity rut, the place where you just can't seem to get back on track again? Here's what I suggest you do. Number one is start to look for opportunities. I know when things aren't going your way, you don't seem to see those opportunities or you don't seem to pursue them. Opportunities are around us everywhere. Sometimes they just quite honestly come dressed in work. They look like work. I remember if you listen to my story, any, I remember working two jobs, you know, working from 730 in the day and I would get home sometimes at 10, 11 o'clock at night. And I would get up and do that every day, Monday through Friday, because I had to. I look for opportunities. And the other thing about it is when you're working that hard and you're really hustling and you're really grinding and you're really trying to make things happen, you don't have time to think about other things. You don't have time to get caught up in past relationships or who's doing what and who said what you've got when you're that focused and you're and you're working that hard. And you're so involved with the things that matter most in your life. You don't have time to get stuck and get caught up in things that can bring you down. So look for opportunities, pursue them because they're not going to necessarily come knocking on your door. Number two, be creative. So the next, the cousin to opportunities is be creative. Think of things that, that you could do differently, whether it may be a part-time job, it might be, Maybe you have a special skill or maybe you have some special knowledge that you could offer someone. Maybe you could tutor someone else, you know, but really think outside the box. 
Look for ideas. Look for things that other people around you are doing or people that you heard of are doing and start to think for yourself, what else can I do? The greatest invention or the greatest thing about all of us is we have a brain and we are all so super intelligent. So use your brain. These thoughts that you have, these ideas are there for a reason. So act on some of them. Figure out some way because you can't just sit, stand pat. You can't just sit still. You can't just make excuses. You've got to be creative. Really, I mean, the sky's the limit. There's so many different things under the sun that you could do. So when you feel yourself feeling low, be creative. Think back to those times when you were a kid. Think back to those thoughts when you were an adult and you had ideas. And then for whatever reason, you decided not to act on them. Start to regurgitate those ideas. Come up with something. Come up with ways to make your life better. And then lastly, one thing that you should do to make sure that you start to solidify the things that you're thinking is look at your challenges in a different light. Look at them as lessons. So understand that you can learn. You're going to learn a lot about what you're going through right now. And, and then the flip side of that, instead of focusing only on the challenges or only on what's not going right in the moment, really spend more of your time remembering when you were successful. We've all done things great. We've all succeeded in school at some level. We've graduated. We might have worked a job. We've raised kids. You know, we've done, we've had uh, successful relationships. You know, we've played sports. We play instruments, on and on and on. Think of the things that you have accomplished in your life, life and really start to focus on the gifts that you have. So what can you offer? We all have many things to offer. And oftentimes when we're not feeling at our best, we tend to forget those or we minimize them or we listen to people say, oh, that's nothing or no one's going to want that. I say not so. That is not so. Believe in your gifts. You have them for a reason. Use them. So real quickly, just real quick recap. You got to look at your opportunities. Look for opportunities. They're out there. If you don't see them, be creative. Come up with your own ideas. And then instead of looking or focusing only on the challenges, look at the lessons that you're learning and then look at your gifts. Focus more on your past accomplishments and your gifts. And then you will start to feel better about yourself because you have no choice. Now, if anything in this episode served you, please listen to it more than once. Share this podcast with anyone else who you think it may serve. Check out some of the past episodes and do me a big favor. Rate the show so that we really can start to share more of this information with more people each and every day. So until the next episode, take care of yourself and do the best, the very best that you can each day for yourself and for your family. And you will continue to move toward your own personal post-divorce paradise. Why? Because you deserve it. You deserve the very best. Until the next episode, take care, everybody. I look forward to talking with you again real soon. Bye now.